right triangle, which means two sides are the same. So we just relabel it instead of we had a Y up here and the X was the other side. They're the same, so I just call them both X. So X equals Y means that's how you say they're the same in math. Uh, so here's our new triangle, X, X, and 1, and we just got uh, X squared plus X squared is uh, 1 squared. So Pythagorean theorem. All right, now we need to do some algebra. So this is some of the first algebra we we're going to do this quarter. What do I do to solve for X? So there's an algebra 1 move. There we go. So we got 2x squared. So x squared pl thing plus another thing is two things. So we got 2x squared equals, and 1 squared is 1, so I divide by 2. x squared equals 1 half, so x equals plus or minus square root, 1 half. Now we need to make a choice, plus or minus, and we're going to go back to the original, right here, our original unit circle. And where we measured, uh, we have an x and a y right here. So should x be positive or negative where I drew our pi over 4 angle? Positive. positive. So we're on the positive x-axis. Y is also going to be positive. So we're going with the plus right there. And we can rewrite it as square root 1 over square root 2. And of course, square root 1 is just 1. So I spent some time last class talking about Rationalizing is basically a waste of your time, so we're going to leave, uh, leave it like this. And we said x also equals y, so x is 1 over square root 2, and of course y is the same thing. And we looked above and said they're both positive. So we have 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. That's our two sides, and we'll write, so we want to write the three trig values. We'll do that at the top, or I'll do that at the bottom, down here. So we'll go, always go cosine first. Cos pi over 4 is 1 over square root 2. Sine pi over 4 is the y value. Oh, don't talk and write at the same time. It's not easy. So sine pi over 4. Oh, it's almost a 4. Pi over 4, same thing. And tangent. So cosine is the x, sine is the y, and what is tangent? It'll be 1 because it's y over x. So you could write it as 1 over square root 2 divided by 1 over square root 2. And depending on how you think about fractions, you could multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, or you can just say it's the same thing. It's a thing over itself. So if you go the... Uh, multiply by reciprocal route, you'll see cancel, cancel, and you'll get to 1. So we just get 1 for our tangent. So you're going to find out my y's can sometimes look a little like my 4's. And again, I try to put things in boxes that are extra important. So what's not in the box, how we got there. So I explained to you how we got there, and then the important thing for you to remember is what's inside the box. So I won't ask you why is cosine pi over 4 equal to 1 over square root 2. The why takes a full page and a whole bunch of geometry that we just went through in 20 minutes to explain. So we just need to remember cos pi over 4 is 1 over square root 2, etc., etc. So our next angle we're going to do is we'll do pi over 6 next. Yeah. So we're going to find the 3 trig values of pi over 6. So again, we're only going to find uh, cosine and tangent because to get secant, cosecant, cotangent, you just reciprocal each of these three. And it's not really worth our time to write the reciprocals out right here. It takes a second or two to write the reciprocals. And again, you have cos, if you write as 1 over square root 2, you can take the reciprocal super quickly, just square root 2. You don't have to take reciprocal and then re-rationalize and then reduce and all that. So where in the world is pi over 6? So I know right away pi over 6 is smaller than pi over 4. You cut into 6 pieces, you're going to have smaller pieces. So 
So exactly how small is it? Let's think about our unit circle. I'm going to write that out again. If I go all the way to the left, that'll be a full pi. So pi is half rotation. That'll get me all the way to the left. And how much of this do I want? I want 1 sixth. So 1 sixth. Let's see, here's a half if I go stop at the 90 degrees or pi over 2. So I want a third of pi over 2, basically. So do your best to get one third into the first quadrant. That looks pretty decent. And we'll draw the angle. If you can squeeze pi over six in there, hopefully that'll be pi over six. We're going to drop our perpendicular to make a triangle. And I realize this is very crowded. I should have drawn a little bigger. But we'll, we'll redraw this triangle in a much bigger way. So our point is again going to be x and y coordinates we need to figure out. So we're going to redraw this uh, triangle. And I'm going to try to squeeze. There is a right angle down there. And my pi over 6 looks like it's labeled in the wrong spot. But the pi over 6 is the, the angle right here. All right, so now we're going to draw the triangle much bigger so we can label it and do other fun stuff. So we got a pi over 6. And what is our right angle measured in radians? We got that right angle at 90 degrees. We got pi over 2. So we got pi over 6, pi over 2. And our last angle, how am I going to get that third angle? It is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I could just say, ah, it's 60 degrees, convert to radians. Uh, what is another way if I don't know about special triangles? Yeah, so even if it wasn't a special triangle, uh, for example, it may not be easy to see because you probably remember special triangles in degrees. So if you don't remember them in degrees, you can always go, uh, the sum is 180 or the sum is pi. So we're going to do that. So if I give this a name, we'll call it phi. So I'm going to do angle. <laughs> sum, so pi equals pi over 6 plus pi over 2 plus phi. And we all know fractions suck unless we go common denominator. So what's our common denominator? Yeah, I can do easier than 12, though. What's the easiest common denominator? 6. I go down to 6. So write it in 6. So we got 6 pi over 6 equals 1 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 plus phi. We don't even need algebra to figure out what phi is. What is phi here? <coughs> 2 pi over 6. Of course you can use algebra, but we'll just act like we're good at fractions because we sort of cheated and went to common denominator. And that's easy to reduce. Pi over, oh, pi over 3 is our angle. <coughs> so we got phi is pi over 3. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't really help us get sides. What side do I know? There is one side of this triangle I definitely know already. And there's a big fancy word for it. I know one of these sides. And it comes from the fact that we're on a unit circle. Yep, so our hypotenuse, also known as the radius when it's written in a circle, so our hypotenuse is going to be 1. Now, getting the other two sides is way less easy. So we have to get creative. So what we're going to do <coughs> is expand this triangle out. And I'm going to use a blue pen right here. If you don't have a blue pen, or another color pen, you can just do sort of dotted dashed lines or write really lightly if you're in a, using a pencil. I'm going to copy the triangle and then flip it uh, vertically upside down. So I'm going to draw the same triangle, oh. the 
same triangle right underneath of it, but flipped upside down. All right, that's pretty good. And if you use this fancy notation, the little double angle, that means the angle matches, the top angle matches that bottom angle that I drew right there with that notation. And we got up another pi over six right here, pi over six. Uh, I don't really need to write the right angle, but do that just to be consistent. All right. Think of the big triangle now, this big one that I just formed. This triangle is very special. What type of triangle are we looking at? This big triangle. I think technically it is an isosceles, but there's even. So I think I mean what you know. What is the good word for a symmetrical triangle? 300 point jeopardy question. It's got the word equal in it. Equilateral. equilateral. All right. So why is it equilateral? Every angle is pi over 3. Pi over 3, pi over 3, pi over 3. So that means equilateral. I want to be careful about how I label this last side because it sort of spans two sides. So I'm going to label this big side as one, not the individual smaller sides. All right, so that big side is one. So I'm going to switch black, back to the black pen, and we're going to focus on our original triangle here. So that was just, uh, I think they call that construction in geometry, where you build other, basically other triangles around it to do fun stuff. What is our height of our black triangle? So just the top, just our original small triangle, what is the height, this vertical measurement? So that'll be one half, because two of those was one, so we got one half right here. All right, I only have one side to get now, and that's the horizontal side. What can I use to get my horizontal side? So we're gonna go Pythagorean theorem now. So we still got right triangles, so we still have Pythagorean theorem. And we labeled it X, so I'm just going to put an X right here. That's our side. So go ahead and write out one. Uh, we'll go X squared plus one half squared equals one squared. So what is misleading about the way I wrote one half squared? It looks like one squared, not the one half. Yeah, so I need to make sure I square the whole fraction. Don't just square the numerator. So I need to write one half squared. All right, one half squared is one squared over two squared, or one fourth. Whoa. That should be a plus. All right, easy math, subtract a quarter. So we get three fourths. That'll be four fourths minus one fourth is three fourths, and then square root everything. X equals plus minus square root, three over four. And at the side, plus or minus, uh, we're in the first quadrant. So every, everybody's positive. X positive, Y positive, so we're going to plus. So I got square root of three over square root four. One of these square roots is very nice. Square root four is just two. And don't say two when you're trying to write three. Three over two, there we go. So X is square root three over two. So we got our X, our Y, we got a while ago right here. So we got Y is that one half. X is our uh, square root three over two. So that is our point, and inside a box here at the bottom, we will write our three values. We have all the numbers we need. So we have cos pi over six is square root three over two. Sine is one half. And tangent, we'll need to do a little reduction you're generally, whenever you have a tangent, you're gonna have fractions of fractions, so you're gonna have to do some reduction. <clears throat> so our tangent will be uh, sine over cosine, or y over x, so we'll write that 1 half over square root three over two. And now, unfortunately, we can't just reduce right away. We're gonna have to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. And we very easily now can cancel the twos. 
So we have 1 over square root 3. And unless you rationalize, that's as good as it's going to get. So we just have 1 over square root 3 as our tangent. And we'll put those in a box. So there is only one more angle that we're going to look at using geometry. So any questions on this pi over 6? I will not ask you to do a geometric construction of another angle or another triangle to make an equilateral triangle. That's pretty tough to do. So I do expect you to memorize these, and I will show you a nice way to memorize them so you won't have to uh, use so many brain cells trying to remember where all the square roots go and where the twos go and the ones go and all that stuff. So they do follow a nice pattern that is absolutely not obvious at this point. So our last angle we're going to do, we're going to find our three trig functions of pi over 3. Now, pi over 3 is familiar. We saw that in that last problem that we just did. So draw a unit circle, start the exact same way. Now, pi over 3, where is pi over 3 going to go? Here is regular pi, 1 pi. So we're going to go 1 third of the way over to pi. So try to break it into three pieces as best you can, and it will be right about there. This triangle is going to be pretty skinny, so you can't write your pi over 3 too wide right there, or you're not going to fit it in the triangle. So there's our pi over 3. We drop the uh, right angle in there. We know only one measurement, which is that one. So now we're going to do the same thing we did before, redraw the triangle way bigger. Oh, and of course we want, we care about this point and the x, y coordinates of it. So now draw a big version of that triangle. So we have pi over 3, right angle. So this triangle is familiar. How does it relate to the triangle that we just drew? And I unfortunately have to make it kind of small to see both of them. So I want to look at this, uh, the original uh, triangle that we drew for the previous problem. So what is the fancy geometry word that relates these two together? I think similar, maybe congruent. I'm not expert on all those. I don't know if congruent lets you flip it around, but it's a reflected version of the original triangle we have up here. So if you uh, you have to reflect it, and you'll get this triangle. So I know it's pi over 3. I have pi over 6 is our little angle at the top. And, of course, pi over 2 is our right angle, obviously. And it's similar triangle, which means the corresponding parts are the same. So the opposite for pi over 2 is 1. The opposite for pi over 6 is 1 half. And the opposite for pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2. So if you uh, cut this out of paper, you could take this triangle and uh, flip it over and lay it right on top of the original triangle that we drew up here. So this is from uh, similar triangles to the previous example. So we can save a lot of geometry just using similar triangles. And I can just write out our values. So you'll be a little careful. Our x is now 1 half. So x is a small number. And our y is the big square root 3 over 2. Oh, it's an ugly 3. We can do better. Square root 3 over 2. OK. So ready to write out sine, cosine, tan or cosine, sine, tangent. Cos pi over 3 is 1 half. Sine pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2. And tangent pi over 3 <coughs> is y over x. So we'll do the y over x reduction over here on the right. Square root 3 over 2 over 
1 half. Now, normally you multiply by the reciprocal. That's probably how you've been taught to do this for a long time. There is another way you can get around this. I'm going to multiply by a special fraction. Why am I allowed to multiply by 2 over 2? Because it equals 1. So I multiply by 2 over 2. So this top 2 gets multiplied to here. The bottom 2 gets multiplied down there. So what happens here? We have square root 3 times 2 over 2 divided by 1 times 2 over 2. And we can easily cancel, cancel, and get square root 3 over 1, which is square root 3. And there's our cosine, sine, and tangent. Of course, you can multiply by the reciprocal instead. You'll get to the same, same thing. You've probably done that enough times in your life. So sometimes it's good to know other strategies also. So this multiply by 2 over 2 works because I had 2 and a 2 in my denominator. That's why the multiply by 2 over 2 trick worked. If I had a 2 and a 3, that wouldn't have worked out. So now we're going to summarize everything in the first quadrant. So here we go. You need to draw a very big first quadrant because we're going to put a whole lot of writing in it. So this first quadrant is going to be uh, huge. So we only want the first quadrant. And we'll go right here near the middle. So we just need first quadrant. So I don't need any negative x and y's. So there's our first quadrant. We'll do our pi over 4 first. That's easy because that is the halfway through your first quadrant. So there's pi over 4. Now you want to be careful about where you do pi over 6. So here is a bad way. I'll draw a bad unit circle or first quadrant over here, and I'll do it in red. You do not have to write down what I write down in red. Um, you can if you want to, but this would be wrong. So this, what I try to do is make them all the same size pieces. So if I fairly cut quadrant one into four pieces, if I was serving all of you pizza or pumpkin pie and I wanted to be fair, I would cut it like this. How, if I cut it in equal pieces, what is the first angle? So this is pi over two at the top. What is this first angle if I actually cut it in equal pieces? That would be pi over eight. So it'd be pi over 8, and then I would have 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8. Those are not the right angles, though. So 2 pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, which is, of course, pi over 4. That is the right angle. But then I have 3 pi over 8, and then a pi over 2 is 4, 4 pi over 8. All right, those are not the angles I want, though. So I don't want to cut it into four pieces that are the same size. Those are not the right pieces. So this is not the way we want to cut it up, even though that would be fair. So what I want, I'll go back to black, and here's my pi over 2. Now I'm going to do something a little strange. I need quarters, and I need sixths. So what common denominator can I use for quarters and sixths? So we go to 12s. So 12s will cover, so I'll make this over 12, and we'll have 6 pi over 12 is our uh, pi over 2. <clears throat> so I want to cut this into 6 pieces. So here is already cut in half, so I want to cut basically the half into 3 pieces. And I'll cut my other half into 3 pieces. And I'll cut my other half into three pieces. Now when I start labeling, what is this first tiny angle right here, the way I cut this up? We, this was 6 pi over 12 right here. We're common denominator. So how many pi over 12 is our first piece? 
or but this tiny piece right here. So if I go way up to here, I have three pi over 12, which is pi over four. What about this first tiny little piece? I'll be pi over 12. All right, did we do a pi over 12? When we did all of our angles, we, still, we didn't do a pi over 12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase the pi over 12. Sorry if you're writing in pen. So I'm gonna get pi over 12 out of here. Our next one is two pi over 12. So I'm gonna label that one right here. So we have two pi over 12. Actually, I'll label a little bit outside. That is too crammed. Pi, uh, two pi over 12, which is pi over six. That is an angle that we know about. So we did pi over six, our smallest angle, pi over four. The next angle is four pi over 12, which reduces to pi over three. The next one's five pi over 12. Five pi over 12 doesn't reduce. It's not an angle that we looked at. So I'm gonna erase that last little wedge that we cut right there. So that one's out. And then we get up to pi over two at the top. So it may feel a little strange because you're cutting it into four pieces that are not the same size. So definitely not fair if you're serving pizza or pumpkin pie or something that somebody wants to eat. But mathematically, this is how you cut it up. So there's a little, you could if you want, uh, you could draw some dotted lines just so you know, oh yeah, there is another piece here that we're not using, like that. So the first and the last piece are twice as big, basically. All right, now we're going to label all the actual values. So the first, the easy one is one zero. We're on the unit circle, so that's easy point right there, one zero. And the next one, pi over six, I think that's the one we just, we just did pi, no, we just did pi over three. So pi over six is cosine square root three over two, sine one half. Uh, the next one was pi over four, it's the first one we did, one over square root two, comma, one over square root two. Next point, is here, that is one half comma square root three over two. And then the last point at the top is another easy one. And this one is zero one. So we're gonna put this in a box. So some of you are very good at memorizing. Probably if you like a lot of the sciences, especially biology, you're very good at memorizing things, foreign language. Uh, if you are a good memorizer, you can memorize this right here, these values. If you're not a good memorizer, maybe you're more of, uh, more of a math person and you like the doing math instead of memorizing things, uh, I'll show you how to lay these out. So what I already showed you is why we sort of skip the first pi over 12 and the last five pi over 12. Uh, another thing you'll notice, the angles. The angles we used went basically zero, which I didn't, I should probably label that there. Zero, comma, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two. So we didn't have a pi over five. So there's no pi over five in there. So don't think about pi over five even though it looks like it almost should go uh, pi over six, pi over five, pi over four, three, two. So there's no pi over five there. So don't think about pi over five. It's not one of the angles. And now how in the world do we remember these numbers? So there is a pattern you should be able to see already. What pattern Think about if you go uh, this direction versus the other direction. I don't write on top because I'm going to erase it right now. But what pattern do you see if you trace up one direction and then trace down the other one? 
So our x's go from 1, and they get smaller to 0. Our y's, if you go the other way, start at 1, get smaller, go down to 0. And they're the same numbers, just laid out two different ways. So all we have to do is remember one of these two. You don't have to remember both of them. We'll just turn the other one around and write it in reverse. So let's see the uh, progression of the sides. So there is a pattern to this. It's definitely not obvious how in the world do we get this pattern. So we'll start, we'll go small to big. So I'll go from zero to one. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do, we're gonna do square root zero over two, which of course is zero. Um, actually, let me write this a little differently. I'm going to write it as, it'll be a little faster to reduce. Same thing, but we'll do square root of the whole fraction, 0 over 4. So that is 0. And then we'll do square root 1 fourth. What does square root 1 fourth reduce to? That'll be 1 half. Uh, square root 2 fourths. And I can rewrite this as square root. Actually, let's reduce it first. Ah, we'll reduce the fraction and then use, apply the square root, if I can fix this. So 2 fourths is 1 half. And 1 half reduces to 1 over square root 2. All right, what's the next up in the pattern? You should be able to see the pattern forming. Three-fourths. Three fourths. I just keep increasing denominator by one each time. Three-fourths. And that is square root three over square root four, which is square root three over two. All right, last one. What number goes in the pattern for the last one? Four-fourths. Four All right, and it reduces to very easily one. Square root one is one. All right, so there you go, 0, 1 half, 1 over square root 2, square root 3 over 2, 1. Those are numbers you need right there. So if we're looking at x's, we got our 0 starts at the top, 0, 1 half, 1 over square root 2, square root 3 over 2, 1. And you just put them in the other order, 0, if I go for my y's, I'll start 0 at the bottom, 0, 1 half, 1 over square root 2, square root 3 over 2, 1. Now, I will make you do so many trig problems that you probably, within a week or less, won't need to write this down anymore. So I almost never tell you the exact problems that will be on your quiz. Quiz one is going to be redraw this first quadrant of the unit circle. This is on quiz one. And you need to label five angles and five points. So we got our five angles up there, and we have our five points. So I need to see five angles, and then each point has two values. So I need to see your 10 values laid out like that. Uh, they're a little hard to see. I kind of had to make them small. I, wrote them too close to the center. So uh, we had 0, pi over 6, pi over 4. Uh, what's that? 0 counts as an angle. Yep. Now, if I want to make a final draft, I can come back and erase my pretend like I was really awesome at fractions and come back here and do all this. And oh yeah, I just remembered all the angles perfectly like this. So whatever works for you. I do want to see the reduced versions, 
So you can absolutely use twelfths if you want to, and then reduce them down. Twelfths are where they all come from. So these five angles are the ones I want to see right here. Uh, again, at some point, you won't need to, if you do enough problems, you won't need to memorize these angles. You'll know them relatively quickly. So I'm going to put the, all that stuff I just erased back in. All right, so again, this, is the first, this will be the first question on your first quiz right here. No, it's going to be a pop quiz uh, this week before Friday. And I think we have no school Monday, which doesn't affect this week. But next week, there'll only be four days for a quiz. All right. <clears throat> so now that we have our first quadrant, So we're going to introduce reference angles soon, but not quite yet. We're just going to use intuition right now to get trig values on angles outside of the first quadrant. So we're going to just do these one at a time to find these trig values. Cos 5 pi over 4 is first one we'll do. Five pi over four. All right, so first of all, what quadrant is five pi over four in? And this is not necessarily easy to answer unless you know uh, common denominators. So we're gonna write our uh, full unit. I think we can see it's bigger than pi over two. So it's definitely not, it's going to be past quadrant one. So we're going to draw a unit circle right here. Ooh, let's pretend that that looks nice. Uh, I want to count in fourths. So normally I would call this pi right here. If I want to go in fourths, how many pi over fours does it take to get over to here in the unit circle? It takes four. So fractions only suck if you don't have a common denominator. If you have common denominator, fractions are not so bad. So if that's 4 pi over 4, where's 5 pi over 4? It's going to be third quadrant. So one thing you could do is basically break it into pi over 4s. So there's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, or 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. So right there, that angle will be 5 pi over 4. So any questions on breaking up this unit circle and figuring out where 5 pi over 4 is? So what I need to know, for cosine, I need to know specifically the x-coordinate right here. So I really want to know the x-coordinate. I don't care that much for this problem about the y-coordinate, but we'll find that anyways. So I'll make the x bold. So Whatever that x value is, is what I want. Uh, that'll be cosine. There is a special angle in quadrant one that is really similar, has really similar x, y values to this point. So think about in quadrant one, what angle is going to get us to a similar point? So we want to think about pi over four. Good news is we already cut it up into fourths. So I already have pi over 4 right here. So here's where you need to use your memory and think about what x, y value do we have at pi over 4. We had 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. So if you don't spend time memorizing what these values are, you're going to have to spend time on your during your quiz figuring these out. So it might take you three or four or five minutes to redraw the first quadrant of your unit circle. And if it takes you that long, you're going to have a lot less time on your other problems. When you do your homework, so if you have to constantly look back at the first quadrant of your unit circle, you're going to spend a lot of time looking back. 
So what I strongly recommend you spend some time memorizing. Uh, one of the best ways to memorize is uh, you can write a note card and look at it a lot whenever you're not doing something and try to quiz yourself. Another thing, you just redraw it 10 times and you'll probably, somewhere around time eight or seven or six, you'll probably have it memorized. So just keep redrawing it. And eventually when you become bored and you don't have to look at the original anymore, that's when you don't need to keep doing that exercise. All right, so we got one over square two, one over square root two from our memory. That is not the same point as the one I want over here in quadrant three. How is this point in quadrant three different from the quadrant one point? Negative x, negative y. So if I was in quadrant two, for example, I would only make x negative. If I was in quadrant four, if I had this point down here, I would make only y negative. But I'm in quadrant three, so x and y are both negative. So this x, y point right here is negative one over square root two, comma, negative one over square root two. And that came from uh, just thinking about in quadrant one, the corresponding point, and then moving that point to quadrant three very carefully, making x and y negative. So I specifically want the x value right there. So cos five pi over four is negative one over square root two. And that is our final answer. Negative one over square root two. Probably could have written, co written cosine a little smaller. So if it has the same denominator, it will have the same point? Pretty much. Uh, we'll see. There's a, a specific way to do it. Um, you need to measure back to the x-axis, uh, which in pi over four, it doesn't matter because it's the same. Uh, this distance is the same as this distance for pi over four, but we'll see whenever it's not the same, uh, you're going to go with back to the x-axis like that arrow. So we'll see that uh, in the next one, we won't have a, uh, what we're gonna do a third in the next one. So that was our first example. We'll label that number one. Number two, we're going to do sine of negative pi over three. So good news is uh, pi over three, negative pi over three is a pretty small number, but it's negative. So what does a negative do to how we measure angles? We're going to go clockwise. So we're going to start always positive x-axis, but we're going to go clockwise, which is backwards from usual. All right, negative pi over 3. So if I go all the way to the bottom, let's go. Normally, this would be negative pi, but this will be if we label this in thirds. So if I go backwards a half rotation, it's negative pi. So I'm going to keep it in thirds. So we're going to have negative 3 pi over 3 to go backwards there. So where's negative one pi over three? It's a third of the way over there. So we're gonna cut that into three pieces, which means we're gonna be about right there. So that should be our pi, negative pi over three. You, if you want to, you could uh, do the next uh, cut right there to get the next third and the next third, but we don't really necessarily need that, that third right there. So that would be a negative pi over three. If we went another negative pi over three, that would be negative two pi over three total, and then negative three pi over three. So the reason I'm labeling all this extra stuff is to build up intuition. The more intuition you have, the less uh, problems you're gonna have when you're doing your homework. Okay, so we got negative pi over three. Now we want to think about, there is one point in the first quadrant that is similar to this. So we're going to have some x, y coordinates here. Now this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. And I'll use the blue pen here to draw everything we need in the first quadrant. So first of all, here our y is going to be negative. So what I want to do is draw, think about how far am I from the x axis right here. So what is the measurement back to the x-axis? This one is not hard to see. It's just pi over 3. That's how far I have to go back. So 
So what I want to do is use pi over 3, regular pi over 3, and quadrant 1. So this will be our pi over 3. And now I need to use my memory and think about where is pi over 3. Uh, what is the point for pi over 3? It is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Now, if you don't have the full unit circle written out right next to you, another way, nice thing you can do is just think, all right, I'm really close to the y-axis here, so my x is going to be small, and my y-coordinate is going to be big. So that's another way, if you can't think about where, which one is the square root 3 over 2 and which one's 1 half, just think x is small and y is big. So how do I change the point around to get the fourth quadrant point that I need? What, ch what changes sign? Just the y. So we got 1 half negative square root 3 over 2. And that negative square root 3 over 2 is the value I need for sine. So I will uh, specifically define our reference angle in a couple of classes. And if you are having a little trouble following here, uh, this should make a lot more sense when we talk about reference angles.